Hi there. So as Tavis said, I'm Mary. This is my dog, Ember. You'll learn more about him in a minute. But we're talking to you today about the care and monitoring of you. So first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about who I am. Then we're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about preventing burnout in both of us. So first of all, who am I? I am a community builder, uh, both personally and professionally. I live in San Francisco. And as you can tell, I don't really look like someone who needs a service dog. My dog also, if you've noticed, doesn't really look like a service dog. But as you can see, this is a picture of me when I was three, and I've got a medic alert bracelet on my left wrist. That bracelet identifies me as a type 1 diabetic. And there are a lot of misconceptions about type 1 diabetes, including this. So there's misconceptions about what I can and can't eat. There's misconceptions about whether or not it's curable. Um, so a couple quick things for you to understand a little where I'm coming from. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. It is not curable. It is treatable, however, which leads me to my next pictures. This is a little representation of some of the things that I carry with me on a daily basis, some of the devices I wear, some of the things that help me monitor myself, including my dog. Um, I tend to be a very independent person. I'm outdoorsy, and luckily, type 1 diabetes does not keep me from doing the things that I want to do. So I'm outside on a regular basis. Uh, I fly in a wind tunnel for indoor skydiving, do a lot of different things that keep me busy and keep me on my toes, and diabetes doesn't stop me from that. So then, where does Ember come in? I got him as a pet about eight years ago, and he started waking me up in the middle of the night and eventually figured out every time he was waking me up, my blood sugar crashed soon after. So I worked with my doctor, talked to her, talked to Animal Care and Control, and got him certified as a service dog and worked with him on training him on how we travel, how we act when we're around big crowds of people like you, uh, what we do in situations like that. And now he travels with me full time and serves as a service dog for me. Pivoting a little bit, I've got some numbers up on the screen here. 7% uh, of people in the U.S. identify themselves as struggling with mental illness, including depression or things along those lines. Diabetics are three times more likely to struggle with that. And the biggest number up there, 49%, is the number of people in tech who struggle with some sort of mental illness, depression, things like that, including burnout. The oxygen mask that I have on the screen is one of the most important things. You need to learn to put your oxygen mask on first. Because if we don't put our oxygen masks on, we can't take care of other people. We can't take care of our product or our site. We can't learn to say no to personal projects, to professional projects, to setting up boundaries around ourselves at work. Something else we can do to help put our oxygen mask on is setting time aside for ourselves. Whether that means saying no to personal things so that you have a night at home to just chill on your couch, or setting aside vacation time when you know things are going to be crazy busy at work. Also, when you're sick, allow yourself to be sick. Don't call in sick to work and then work from home. Just shut off your laptop, put it away, and you might be amazed at how much more quickly you feel better and rested and ready to go back to work. Along those same lines, when you start feeling depressed, when you start feeling anxious, talk to someone. Most of our insurance plans, I hope, have some sort of caveat in there that allow you a certain number of counseling sessions, certain number of conversations with a psychiatrist every year. Take advantage of that. Also, talk to people around you. Find people that you identify with outside of work. You might be surprised by this, but Meetup is for more than just tech talks. You can find uh, photography groups, hiking groups, people who identify with you and the places that you identify with which leads me to my next slide, find places that connect with you. Make sure you're allowing yourself to go to places where you can get re-energized, where you can feel at peace, where you can feel like you're ready to go back to work to the daily grind. So how do I know about both of these things? Diabetes, that's easy. I've been one for a long time. Uh, burnout, I burned out really, really hard about two years ago. And it's something that I really struggled with. I struggled with being honest about it. I struggled with talking to people about it because of the perceptions or being told at work it was just a performance issue. I struggled with relying on resources like these. Um, so reach out to people. Rely on these resources and other ones as well. I'll tweet these out afterwards. Also rely on your community around you. Everyone in this room understands your day-to-day -day life for the most part. They understand what it means to feel overwhelmed or run down or anxious or nervous about a new job or everything like that. So rely on the people around you. And like I mentioned, last slide, I work at a company called SparkPost. I'm a community builder there. Uh, we handle your email infrastructure. So we take all of the email servers off your plate so it's one less thing to burn you out. So if you're interested in talking email or burnout or anything else, hit me up on Twitter. Find me later. I'm easy to find. I'm with the one with the dog. 
and thanks so much. Thank you very much.